don't leave us the same today. Please don't let us leave here the same way that we walked in today, God, because you are so good and you love us so much, Father. And we thank you for that. And we give you all the glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Come on up. <laughs> or not. mess this morning. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what to do, so don't ask me. Alright. Nope. Whew. Those are your glasses. I don't want those. Can't see out of mine. something. Love solid ground. No, that's not the one I'm looking for. Love navigation. My buddy, my buddy John Maxwell says, he talks about the law of navigation. Anybody know what the law of navigation is? Well, navigation says that anybody can steer the ship. Whew. I saw me doing this, too. Navigation says, oh yeah, that's great. Love navigation says that anybody can steer the ship. Hang on. I'm not quite sure why this is happening. Here's what I know. tell you what I know for just a second. <laughs> there. That's better. Law of navigation says that anybody can steer the ship, but it takes a leader to chart the course. Problem with that law in my world right now is that I'm out front and I have no clue uh, yikes Whew. okay ready I'm not promising anything Law of navigation says that anybody can steer the ship, but it takes a leader to chart the course. The only problem with that is when you're the leader, you're out front and you're getting shot at. And everybody and their brother feels like they're doing great or they've got an opinion about how the ship is moving or they got an opinion about where you're going or how it looks or how the horizon looks. But the leader's out there getting shot at by the... Uh, powers that be in the, uh, you know, the atmosphere. And so I've been getting shot at now for about a week. And that's okay. Because if I'm getting shot at, then hopefully you're not getting shot at. Hopefully I'm taking all the flack. And the, uh, you know, conventional wisdom says that you know when you're over the uh, target because you're getting a lot of heat. Boy, I'm getting a lot of heat, so we must be right over the stinking target. So I'm getting ready to see some things happen in the spirit realm, and hopefully you are too. I hope you're not thinking this is going to be church as normal in the coming days. I hope you don't think that where you're going, see, because I'm charting this course, man, and 
I personally, I'll just let you know, I'm just, I'll just confess this to you. I personally can't stop, me personally. You can stop if you want, and, and, and I'll love you just the same. But me personally, I can't stop. And so I'm going to continue to move into an uncharted place, and I'm going, to, I'm going to walk in there with victory. I'm going to walk into the stinking devil's camp. I'm going to kick the stinking gates down, and I'm going to take back what he's taken from me. And hopefully you can acquire that mentality and do it too because the devil's been beating the snot out of me and in your life he's been beating the snot out of you. But maybe we've been, not we as a church and not we, but the kingdom has been taking a stinking beating and it's laid down and just taken whatever the devil wanted to throw. And because of that, some things have happened in the spirit realm. And you ever notice that, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. You ever notice that church don't look like it used to? You wonder why church don't look like it used to? It's because the devil's infiltrated the church and he started talking to the saints. And he started watering down the word, and he started twisting the truth, and he started causing things to look like we feel like we want it to look instead of the way the truth really is. And right now, that's ticking me off real bad. So in me and my life, I've got to chart my course right back into the truth right back into God's truth for my personal life. Because if I'm going to see revival in my life, if I'm going to see God moving through my life, if he's going to be touching people and breathing life into dead bones and he's going to be bringing things back to life and he's going to be speaking life, I've got to be full of life. And I can't be laying down and worrying about, oh, well, you know, we do that a lot, don't we? We worry about everybody else. I personally have to move into that place. So law of navigation says that anybody can steer the ship, and a lot of people do. But it takes a leader to chart the course, and my course is going to be right straight into the presence of God. Hopefully yours is too. Because if it is, we're going to see some things that we've never seen before. Anybody got an idea that there's a new reality in the spirit realm these days? There's just a new reality. I mean, we, we can wish there wasn't, but the truth is there is. And there's just not any way to say that there, you know in your knower, in your knower, you know that there's a, there's a change in the spirit. And that change can't be met with flesh and it can't be met with will. It can't be met with my thought process. It's got to be met with spirit. So if there's a change in the spirit realm, I've got to meet the spirit realm with spirit. I can't meet it with stuff that don't work. Because the only hope I have and the only hope you have is to meet that spirit realm head on with more spirit. Because... That leads us right into that, doesn't it? You did that real well. Here's my my Meyer coupon. Can you give me uh, 2 Corinthians 10.4? Because here's the deal. Can you go back to, uh, did I say... Can we go to four? There. Because the weapons that we use cannot be flesh, and they cannot be my will. Something really struck me this week. And go with me here for a minute. I'm just going to talk about it. It might be totally boring to you. The Bible says, hang on, when I get this straight, maybe I'll be making some sense up here. 
Forget I said that. Can you give me Psalm 24, verse 1? Something that occurred to me this week. Well, something, 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 something in my prayer time. I was right in the middle of my prayer time, and I was, man, I've been taking fire the whole week. Just incoming. I haven't even had the chance to reach for the trigger yet. That's how heavy the stinking bombardment's been. Whew. Well, it's been that heavy because something's right on the horizon. Now, I don't know what that is, but it's pretty good. Is All the fire I'm taking, it's pretty good stuff. And this showed up in my prayer time. The Holy Ghost spoke this to me. He said, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Boom, came right out of the atmosphere, came right into my prayer time, and I went, cool, awesome. You, you know when God speaks to you sometimes and you're just like, what the junk does that mean? You're like, you know what you need. You know the life preserver that you need at that point. At least you think you do. And he said this to me. He said, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So every single thing on the earth and in the earth is the Lord's. It belongs to him. See it? Every single thing. He created all of it. It's his, and he can do anything with it he wants to. Right? And that's, we understand that. We get it. We get that, don't we? The earth is the Lord's. We've read it a million times, and the fullness thereof, and everything in the earth is the Lord's. And he can do with it anything he wants. Cool. Now, I didn't give him this scripture, but there's a scripture that says, heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. Mm -hmm. Right? You know that scripture? So heaven is the Lord's too. Isn't that cool? God lives in heaven. And heaven belongs to him. And earth belongs to him. You know what don't belong to him? My emotions and my will and my thought process and the way I feel and the way I want to keep feeling because I know what I need to see and I know how I need to see it. And if I see it that way, I'm happy. And if I don't see it that way, now there's a problem, Houston. I don't have any idea what God wants to do with what he owns in my life, but I'm willing to stay where I'm at to make sure that my will stays intact and I feel good about what's happening around me. So here I am sitting in my prayer time, just being real. I'm sitting in my prayer time and I'm going, so what in my life don't you own? And he said, your will and your thought process your thought process don't line up with mine. And your will don't line up with mine either. Because if it did, you'd be talking different. You'd be acting different. You'd be thinking different. You'd be speaking different. Things around you would be changing to look like you want them to look. So heaven is his throne. He owns the, he owns the heavens, right? It's his. And earth is his footstool, and earth is the Lord's. It belongs to him, and the fullness thereof. But the only thing he doesn't own in the earth is my thought process and my emotions and my will. And he gave those to me, and hopefully my will lines up with his will. And if my will lines up with his will, then I get exactly what I'm looking for in earth. But I've got to trust him to the point where it's okay if it doesn't look like I think it should look. The end process is going to be the same. Am I willing to trust God in my will and in my emotions and in my thought process 
to get me to the end of the earth in my little world and make it look like I think, because believe me, I got a way that my earth is supposed to look. And if it don't look the way I want it to look, now I got a problem. Don't you? Because I know what God ought to be doing and I know how he ought to be doing it. But if I take control over what's God's, I disconnect what's God's from God with my own will. And now here I am wanting God's will in my life as long as it leads to my will and as long as it looks like my will. Because I know what he ought to be doing, and I know what my will ought to look like, and don't you know that he ought to know what mine looks like too? Well, if I do that, here's the problem. I've got a, gra a brand new granddaughter that was born Tuesday, Wednesday, and she's in the hospital, and I need him to do some things in her. But if I take back my will from his fullness, then I don't get his fullness in my life. And if I don't get his fullness in my life, then guess what? I start to disconnect his fullness from hers. And I've been sitting around all week long, just being real. I've been sitting around all, listen, the fire started coming in last Sunday night, man. It started coming in hard. And the first thing my mind wants to do is I want to start looking around to why is this fire coming in like this? Well, the devil don't care. He's just going to increase the fire because he wants to keep my eyes and my understanding off what reality really is. See, the problem is the devil understands that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and he understands that heaven is God's, but he also understands that my emotions and my will absolutely belong to me, and his goal is to get them belonging to him. Because if he can get my will and my emotions belonging to him, who owns me? He does. Because pretty soon, things ain't looking like I want. And then I start shaking my fist at God and telling him what I think he ought to be doing and how he ought to be doing it. And I'm taking the fullness of my life away from him and putting it in my hands. Listen, I couldn't create something if I needed to. So the devil knows this little fact. He showed me this. I'll just go down the road while I'm here. I saw this. This is in my prayer time now. This is like a spirit thing, right? I'm in kind of, as, you know, Paul said I was in the spirit, right? So I'm in prayer, and I'm in the spirit. I, you know, for lack of a better way to talk about this, I'm going to borrow a piece of this paper. Can you, I don't want to rip, there's one. Well, you know, I don't want to rip the notes out, because if I do, somebody's going to have a problem. <laughs> and he said it's like this. He said, you know those old school, I'm old school, right? When I started having church, we didn't have cool things like LED lights, there were the old school kind that you put this gel thing. You want a different color, you put this gel thing in front of them to turn them color. You put a blue one in front or a red one in front or a purple one in front or a clear one or whatever, you put them in front, right? Well, the gel lets the light through, but what's inside the light can't get through. You follow? So he says like this, this whole scenario is like taking one of those gels in your life and holding it above your head. He said, you can see through that thing, but everything in heaven can't get to you because your emotions and your will are blocking the very thing that you're looking up through there and seeing God has for you. You want what's up there, but you aren't willing to remove the gel and allow what God's fullness is to come because you know better than him. And I went, wow. 
okay, so here's my deal. What now do I have to remove for him to be able to get through? Because remember, see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing greater than you can contain. Well, I want the blessing, but I sure as heck don't want to remove the gel because I've lived that thing my whole life. And I know what God wants, and I can see it up through there. And I want it down here, but what's the problem? Well, remember, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He can do anything he wants on earth. And heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool, and he can do anything he wants in heaven. What's the problem? Right here. Right here is the problem. And if I refuse to change what's going on right here, I effectively take the fullness of God that I'm looking to get into my life and take it away from him and put my hands on it, get it all gnarly and nasty and greasy and fingerprinty. But I know what he wants, and I know how he's going to do it. I'm just telling you what he showed me. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking up through this gel thing, old school guy. I don't have LED lights back in the day. And I can see God's will up through there. And there's a scripture that says we see through a glass darkly. So I'm seeing what I think I want to see. Anybody got any idea that we make our future what we think we want from God instead of what God wants and we can see it, it's not totally clear, but man, I wish it would hurry up and get here, and God's going, I wish you'd hurry up and take that thing, the junk out from in front of your face and over your head so I could get what's in heaven to earth and become in you what you've always wanted. I'm just telling you what my prayer time's been like. Maybe that's part of my problem up here. So how are you, let me go back to there then, okay, I'll follow. How are you then leading your life? Because anybody can steer the ship, right? But it takes a leader to chart the course. How are you charting the course? Are you charting the course God's way? Or are you charting the course your own? And I've been charting a lot of, listen, dude. Okay, I didn't just fall off the turnip truck last night. I might have been born at night, but it wasn't last night, right? So I've had a lot of stinking grief and junk and stuff I didn't like in my life. Self-inflicted. If I'm going to get the fullness of God in my life, I'm going to have to take my hands off of his will, and I'm going to have to take my, wipe my fingerprints off, and I'm going to have to change what's right in between here. Because it ain't going to, the two don't coincide. So the goal is to get my will and my thought process conformed to his, right? I need to be conformed to the image of his son. Well, Jesus said, I don't do anything unless I see him do it. So I need to figure out what he's doing, and that's what I need to do. I need to do what he's doing rather than what I'm doing. What I'm doing isn't working, and I'm not getting the fullness that I'm looking for. So maybe, my, maybe I'm charting the course wrong. I mean, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I'm just telling you. I've been taking heat the whole week. Continuous until just now, the fire has not stopped. Right now, the fire has stopped because I'm firing back. And since I'm firing back, the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God, not through my hands. Did I give you that scripture? 
Yeah, now can we go to 2 Corinthians 10, 4? The weapons of our warfare in this little game of life are not carnal. They don't come with my fingerprints on them. They come with God's fingerprints on them. And if I'll keep his fingerprints on them and leave my fingerprints off them, I'll go far. Now watch. Here's what it's all about. Because the devil knows that the space between the top of your head and your chin is fair game. He played the game in the garden, and he's continuing to try to play the game in the church 24-7, 365 with the people of God. Because if I can get them programmed, I can get them to figure, well, not figure out. I can get them to believe what I want them to believe instead of what God actually wants them to believe and what the truth actually is. That's why the church is starting to look like the world. Because we don't actually believe it. If we actually believed it, it would look totally different. But we, we run around trying to look just like this or just like this or just like this. Maybe when I start looking just like God, maybe some things in our life would change. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Now here's what the devil understands real good. And here's what he's trying to keep you from understanding. He knows. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But the power comes through God, right, to the pulling down of strongholds, those things that have been in your life for years and years and years and years and years, and you've thought the same way for years and years, and you haven't necessarily liked it, but I've done it, and it became a stronghold in my mind. So the weapons that God gives are going to pull those things down, right, right? Now, we've got to decide in our foot of space here if we want it to happen or not. Okay, go to the next one. Casting down imagination. See that? God gives you power to change the images that you see. We take the images and we put them before God's word and we're wondering why the junk things don't change and God's saying maybe you ought to get something else in front of your face. (sighs) Sorry. Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 22. Get the word in front of your eyes. Get it coming out of your mouth. Get it going in your ears, going around and around and around and around and around your spirit, man. My wife... Here, let me throw her under the bus. Some time ago, there was an issue. Just remember, it just kind of popped up in my spirit, so I'm just going to throw it out there and throw her under the bus. Can I do that? I'm not going to look at her. I'm just going to give her the boot. I'm not looking at her. There were some things going on in her life, and she wanted them to junk out of there, just like me, just like you. And I said to her, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 22, that's the prescription. If you do the prescription with this, it will change. So are you doing the prescription? And she said, yes, I'm absolutely doing the prescription. And I said, what are you doing? And she said, well, I'm speaking it. And I said, awesome. And I said, what does that do? And she says, well, uh, that means I'm hearing it, and faith comes by hearing. And I said, awesome. And she said, I'm getting, I'm rolling it around, 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 around. And I said, awesome. What was she missing? I said, are you getting that word in front of your eyes? See, because we want to shortcut it. We want to shortcut it, and we want it to work out the way we want it because we want it to work out that way. But if I've got something else in front of this, guess who owns me? Whoever owns what's in front of my eyes. Whoever owns and what's in front of my eyes, doesn't matter what I'm hearing, doesn't matter what I'm seeing, or it doesn't matter what I'm rolling around. I'm going to be rolling around in there what I'm getting right here. So if I get the word in front of my eyes, here's what I tell people. It gets the doubt out. 
If I get the word in front of my eyes, the doubt and unbelief in my life, leave. Want me to prove it to you? When everybody was getting bit by snakes in the wilderness, what did God tell Moses to do? What did he tell them? Get a snake, put it on a pole, set it up where everybody can see it. Why? Because they need to see what they're believing. Because without that, doubt and unbelief just runs, 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 runs through my life. But if I get that in front of my eyes, it pushes the doubts like that spiritual bulldozer pushes the doubt right out of my life because something else is in front of my eyes. Whatever's in front of your eyes is going to be your reality. And so if the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, but we're not doing what the Lord says to have victory in the earth, then we live a What's that scripture? Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof? Well, where's the power? It's infused right here. This is the infusion of God's power in your life. We have to have this in front. So God's casting down imaginations. See the image. See the image? Can't really do it real good. Can't really. See that? Casting down images. I have to change what I see. I have to change the images in front of my eyes if I do my mind switches. Changes over to God's way of thinking instead of my way of thinking. Okay? I, I, listen, you're living my prayer time, okay? Just telling you. Just, I, just taking you with me in my prayer time. And every high thing, so, so we've already pulled down strongholds, right? Those walls that have hemmed me in for years and years and years and years and years and kept me thinking the exact same way are starting to crash because I'm not looking at those walls. I'm looking at God's word, and those images are starting to change. And if the images start to change, I can begin to believe something different. If I can believe something different, then things start to change, and I now become the one in power brings every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. There it is. Here's what the devil knows. He's trying to get your knowledge center. Because he knows God owns the heavens, and he knows everything in the earth is God's, but he's warring against your knowledge of God. So if he can get your knowledge to switch, if he can change things to you embrace what you see instead of what you know, if, you can, if he can get you to embrace what you feel instead of what you know, if he can get you to embrace how you speak instead of what you know, he still rules, doesn't he? Because knowledge of God is what the devil is trying to infiltrate into your life and pull down. This is why every time somebody comes to me and says, oh, my life's a mess, first thing I do, what's, what, what do I do first? How's your prayer life? Because that's where you're going to hear from God. How's your word life? Because you've got to infuse your life with truth. Jesus said, I am truth. Did he not? So am I infusing my life with truth, or am I letting the devil dictate and put anything in front of my face that I want? Because anything that goes in front of my face is what I'm going to start to believe, right? I can tell her, I don't know what I could tell her, but if I told her enough, she'd believe it, right? Well, that's what happens when I get the wrong thing out in front of my face, and I get the right thing in. This is where I'm going. This is where I'm going. You don't have to go. You don't have to go. I'm going. You don't have to go. Because, see, here's what's going to happen. 
I've watched God do miraculous things, and I'm going to watch him do it some more. And he's going to do it faster and faster and faster and bigger and bigger and bigger. Sam Chan has a book called Bigger, Faster Leadership. God's going to lead me to a place where the things in my life are happening so fast and so big that God's going to be drawing people to me. Things are going to be happening in their life that they've been looking for for years and years and years, can't get. Suddenly they just show up. Well, how's that happen? Well, now I get to point them to God. I get to point them to God's word. I get to point them to God's presence. I get to point them to God's truth instead of their truth or my truth or anybody else's truth. But navigation ain't no big deal when you got somebody telling you what to do. When you're leading yourself, now that's when the problem comes in. Anybody can... Anybody, anybody can steer the ship, but it takes a leader to chart the course. When, you, when God's telling you to turn left and everything in you don't want to turn left and you turn left, there's blessing in it. When God tells you to go straight and everything in you don't want to go straight and you go straight, there's blessing in it. Let me prove it. Here's another scripture just landed. First beatitude. Blessed are the poor in what? For theirs is the? So God's kingdom shows up when my thinking will gets less and less and less and less and less. And his will gets more and more and more and more and more. His kingdom shows up. His kingdom comes. Just rambling at this point. Here's what the devil is looking for, your knowledge of God. And he's trying to keep it your ignorance of God instead of your knowledge of God, your wisdom of God. Um, scripture, um, God builds the house, right, by wisdom. By wisdom, God builds the house. But by knowledge and understanding, the rooms are filled. Well, knowledge has a direct correlation to wisdom. Pretty sure it says in Psalms, wisdom is the principal thing. In all you're getting, get wisdom. So in my wisdom, I'm going to, I should go, you know what? That stinking thing has been there long enough. Because all, and listen, all these areas are beautiful. All these areas, all these areas are beautiful. But in that one or two location place, I got this thing walking around. It's kind of like pig pen walk. Remember Charlie Brown? If you're as old as me, you remember Charlie Brown and pig pen walked around with it under the cloud and Everywhere pig pen went was the cloud. Well, there's a whole lot of Christians out there in the world to do that. And they're walking around going, why ain't God showing up? Well, God's right on the other side of that gel that you refuse to remove. And see, here's the problem. Here's a problem. This just occurred to me in that prayer time, too. Sometimes when it don't look like we want to look up there, what do we do? We cover that up. And we say, you know what? I don't like the way that looks. I'm going to do it any way I want to do it because I don't like the way that looks. I don't like it the way it's going. I don't like what I see. I don't like what I feel. I don't like what I hear. But I don't like that either. So I cap God's will in my life because I don't want to remove this thing. It's that thick. It's that thick. Everything above that's blessing. That thing right there keeps the blessing of God from the kingdom of earth where I reside. Uh, Satan's the prince of the power, right? And I'm pretty sure the king that rules has got a lot more power than the prince that just hangs around. So I hope I haven't insulted you. I'm just, I just took you on a trip of my prayer time this week. 
Because listen, God wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. God wants to heal you more than you want to be healed. God wants to deliver you more than you want to be delivered. God wants to take you into your destiny more than you want to go into your destiny. But you, I personally have to let go of my own will and I have to grab hold of his own will for my own life because if I don't, I'm short-circuiting from every, like in this eight inches right here, is short-circuiting everything on the planet that God wants to do because I'm only letting him in sporadically. Does that make any sense? And I look up and I see what's in heaven and I go, man, that sure does look good. But in this thickness that's that's what's keeping me from from the blessing and the power and the kingdom and the healing and the prosperity and the future of God but that much of my will holds back his will Sometimes I take it forever. And so I started, <laughs> you know, it's just another, it's just another, because listen, everything God tells me, I've got a bad habit of working on. Because I know that the farther I go, the less I can take with me. And so if he opens my eyes to something, there's something there that I've got to deal with. There's something there that I need to repent of. Well, we don't like that word now, do we? But repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? Well, if the kingdom of heaven is at hand, it's right here. If the kingdom of heaven is at hand, it's right here. It's right here. But repentance comes in here, changing my mind, changing the way I think. Look up that word, repent, means to change the way you think. So when I change the way I think, what happens? What I've blocked God's vision with goes away, and what I've blocked God's blessing with goes away, and the blessing begins to pour out through that window and buckets and dump trucks and stinking freight liners and I can't contain it. something that like I can't get rid of here we go again anybody know that God's plan is to get you to the marriage supper of the lamb that's the goal But we, not we, we, us, but we as a kingdom, we as a global church have twisted our thought process to be okay with temporary revival instead of full-blown, all-out, never-ending revival. And we've dabbled in things that have kept us from God and this guy said his goal was to build a wedding altar that's something the God's people need to come to a wedding altar I, I went wow and he described it like this all John the Baptist did John the Baptist yeah I'm, I'm like I'm like in that I can't get out of it 
You know, when you get stuck in certain scripture and you can't get out of it, it's because something's getting ready to happen. John the Baptist was put on the planet to make it clear to God's people who Jesus was when he came. That was it. He was put on the planet to make it clear to God's people who needed God who Jesus was when he came. Now, not everybody connected to Jesus, right? Not everybody wanted it, but some people did. I, 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 found, that, I found that analogy funny. I went, hmm, you know, the church's job, not this church personally, but the church, it's their job is to prime the saints for the returning of Jesus so that they can re recognize him when he comes. But the church, not this church, but global church, has allowed so much flirtation go on over here and flirtation go on over here. Where'd that word come from? Flirtation go on over here, and flirtation go on over here. That it's starting to cloud the vision of who he really is. And he shows up in my life every week, knocks on my stinking door. And I've got so many other lovers in front of my eyes that I can't even see him. I don't even know who he is anymore. Listen, this is my wife. But if I put every other woman in, in the city in front of her, pretty soon I wouldn't even recognize her. I wouldn't even recognize her. Our goal, not our goal personally, not my goal, per, well, yeah, I guess my goal personally is to create an atmosphere in the church so that the bride of Christ, who I am and probably you are, can recognize Jesus when he shows up in your life. And you say, well, that's cool, because when he shows up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to recognize him. Well, what about two days ago when he showed up in your life and knocked on your door and you didn't want anything to do with him? Because there were too many lovers. You were looking at things you shouldn't have been looking at. You had things in front of your face you shouldn't have been. You were listening to things you shouldn't have listened to. Should have been listening to God's word, was listening to oh, the oh, woe is me's. That's where I've been. I've been getting shot at. You don't think, they say there's no such thing as an atheist in a foxhole. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of bullets flying over a foxhole, dude. A lot of them. And you're, you know, it tries to cloud your vision and it tries to cloud your mind of who God really is and what he can really do. I should have been walking with my chin up and my shoulders back and I should have been breathing fire and instead all week long I've been trying to figure out how to get out of the foxhole. All I got to do is stand up. All I think I got to do is stand up. That's all I got to do. And the bullet stopped as soon as I stood up. You know how I know? Because I'm standing here right now and they ain't been a stinging shot fired in 40 minutes. Because I've been speaking what reality is instead of speaking and thinking what he wanted me to think. Oh, me. Just telling you what my prayer time was this week. So I guess my exhortation for the day take stock of what you are taking stock of and see if it's in front of God's plan for your life. Take stock of. Be as serious as a heart attack in your life. Because listen, Jesus wants to show up in your life every single day. It's not just a, we're just going to show up at the wedding supper of the Lamb. Dude, he wants to bring the wedding supper. Repent for the kingdom of heaven's a hand. He wants to bring the wedding supper to you right now right stinking now right now and the church is going well you know i got i got to go shopping well you know i got 
I got to go here. I, well, you know, I'm a little tired today. I think I'll skip church. Well, you know, well, you know, I, I, I just don't have time to read. Well, you know, I, 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 I hmm. Who am I loving? Mm-hmm. Who am I loving? George T. song for all you old rockers. I said, who do you love? Remember that? You remember that? I don't remember much other than that. I said, who do you love? That came up in my prayer time this week, too. Who am I loving on? I need to boot right out the stinking door. And drag the bridegroom right back in the stinking door. And give him preeminence. And give him time. Because remember, love is spelled T-I-M-E. And give him an open door into my heart and life. Can we stand? You like that rendition of George T, didn't you? Always great. <laughs> Listen, I look around the room, I pretty sure everybody's name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm pretty sure you're all seated in heavenly realms. I'm pretty sure that you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior, but here's what I don't know. I don't know what you've been putting in front of him. And that's kind of the old deal. It's for me to know and you to find out. It's for you to know And I don't want to find out. All I want to do is I want to convince you to set that lover aside and drag the original bridegroom right back in. Well, we know that the book of Revelation is really to the end time church what the book of Acts was to the first church right and it says I have this one thing against you he's talking to the church he's talking to the church the global church that I'm part of so really and truly he's talking to me he said I got this you're cool you're all that you're good looking you're smart this one thing I got a problem with and then what's it say you have lost your first love so in that vein in that mode in that place I don't know where you stand with him only you know in the depths of your spirit in the depths of your heart you're the only one that knows where you stand with him but if you're not in a love relationship with him you are in a love relationship with somebody you are in the Revelation 19 7 the bride has made got into a process that changed the way the bride thought and the bride turned around and went what the junk am I doing I gotta get back to my first love so How do you close something like that? I don't have a stinking clue. So, as always, if you need prayer, this altar is open. We've got people who will pray for you. If you just need to soak, you can do that. If you need to run out screaming, I get it. 
right now I'd like to run out screaming too. But I want to challenge you this week. Take a look at what you've been putting in front of because it's your job. And listen, it's not just my job. It wasn't just John's job. It's your job as part of the church to make clarity in the people's eyes and mind and hearts around you so that they will recognize Jesus when he comes. And if you can't even recognize him, how are they going to do it? So we're just going to worship here for a minute. If you need prayer, the altar's open. There's a current running right here, man. I'm telling you, there is. I haven't been shot at for 45 minutes now. That, that water just blocks those bullets. Thank you. 